Well, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to another webinar from Arial. This time we're starting a circle and I'm very, very honored to be starting to be doing the kickoff with the Vamos Recuperar webinars. Today we're talking about the Primeiro Ciclo, we're talking about the little ones, right? And um, looking at activities that we can do with them. So this time we're talking about Cat in the Hat, so let's see what I can get out of my hat, right? So what are we looking at today? So we're going to be looking at what activities need to be, especially if we're, we're working with, with younger children. We're going to be looking at activities without any tech required, activities that do require some tech, activities that we use, that we create by adapting what the course book um, gives us. And we're also going to look at games, some games and some online resources. So we do have a lot of uh, stuff going on. Um, please bear with me and I hope you enjoy the session. Just a heads up. One of the activities we'll be carrying out today requires Padlet. So if you want to go ahead and install Padlet in your mobile phone, it's better to have it on your mobile phone than your computer. The links to the app can be found below. I've always wanted to do this. So below in the description area. Okay, so go ahead and install the app while we get uh, the ball rolling. Okay. Now, here we go. So, first of all, activities need to be. What does an activity need to be? So, sometimes people don't take first uh, Primeiro Ciclo serious. So, they have this idea that we're just there to play with children. And we're not um, seen, or activities are not seen as truly, truly important or that they're well thought of. Um, and, and this couldn't be further from the truth, right? Why? Because we do need to think about the activities that we use with any level, with any age, obviously. But when we're looking at little kids, it's really important that they, have, that they are memorable. That is, that kids remember, they associate a certain activity with a certain topic or grammar topic or lexical topic that we want to focus on, that they are achievable. This is going to interfere with motivation, with how they perceive their ability to use the language. They have to be communicative, so they have to allow children to use English uh, to communicate. They have to be monitorable, so the teacher needs to be able to see if this is working or if this isn't working, how good is it, how are the students evolving, all that is important. Obviously, they need to be a little bit challenging because even though they do need to be achievable, if they are too easy, then, you know, kids just lose interest and it's not fun anymore. And then they have to be meaningful. That is, we have to think carefully of what activity we are going to do, when we're going to do, and why we're going to do it, right? We all uh, enjoy, or some of us really enjoy using technology, but we're not going to use technology just for the sake of using technology. You know, sometimes the same effect can be achieved by a worksheet or um, sitting on the floor circle activity. So there are a number of things that we can explore and that we should explore, and we shouldn't just focus on one type of activity. That said, it could be the course book, it could be the workbook, it could be uh, technology, the internet, the use of interactive whiteboards, whatever. What we need to think is that everything can be seen as a resource, and we have to try and use and incorporate as much of it as we can in different lessons throughout the year, okay? All right, so please bear this in mind when you're preparing your activities. So moving straight to the activities, what activity would I like to start with? Sometimes when we're beginning a unit, when we're starting a topic, we don't really know how to introduce the topic. Well, the book usually starts, or book units usually start with a story, right? But there's so much more that we can do right before we 
jump into the story. For example, we can try and sparkle students' curiosity to what is going to happen here? What sort of language do they know about that, right? So a very simple idea is to pick up a picture, an image, any sort of image, and just cut it out and then show it to the students, right? And you can do it in two ways, like here on the board I have one picture that I've just divided. Not sure if you can understand what that means. Would you mind just typing in the chat box there so that I can see if you're aware of what we're working on today or not? Let me just see very quickly. Nobody's commenting. You don't know what this is, really? What is it? What could it possibly be? I think it could be, yeah, like somebody's saying, it could be a monster, and it is a monster. The body, exactly. So the idea is this. So this unit or my unit is going to be about the body, right? So what I decided to use was a monster because the book that I'm using has a monster. Uh, the, the, the whole unit surrounding the body has got the, yes, it is a monster. Oh, thank you. You know, there's a delay here. So for a minute, now you're coming in with your replies. For a minute, I thought nobody was listening to me and I sort of panicked. Thank you so much for being there. Okay, yes, so the exercise was this. I printed a monster, I cut out the monster, and I gave each pair of students the different parts and I asked them to put it back together. While they were doing this, I asked them, do you think you can tell your partner what part of the body you've got? Just to see how much they do know, how much they are aware of before we go straight into the lesson, okay? Now, this can be done with images from the book, so the story itself, of course, but, for example, if you don't really know what you, what you can use as an image, this is what you can do. This is a, a website called I'm a Puzzle, okay? And you'll find the, the link to the, all the websites I'm going to mention here at the end of the presentation, okay? So, this takes you to a website, no registration required, no download required, nothing, okay? It's completely free and you just use it. So you choose a picture, any picture you want, just in case you don't feeling very, very creative. In this case, I've got the, the picture here from Arial, the logo. Then you're going to choose how you want the puzzle to be created. I'm gonna choose a heart here, okay? You choose how difficult you want your puzzle to be. Let's go with easy, okay? And now we're gonna start. So if you have an interactive whiteboard, you can, instead of cutting it out, or if you don't have time, you can just use the website and it's going to create a puzzle, okay? So this is my puzzle. If I have an interactive whiteboard, I can ask the students to come in. If you're teaching at a school that has tablets and that they allow students to use tablets, then you can have the students individually try to link it, or you can have them interacting directly with the board if you have a, a smart whiteboard. Okay, so you've got this, it goes here, then, I don't know, maybe here, yeah, got it. Then this one's gonna there, no, not there. Okay, so and then if you start getting tired or if you really don't know how to move on, just click solve. And there it goes. Okay, and you get the image. And in the process, you were able to stimulate children's curiosity and about what you're going to be working on. So it's a way of captivating them, getting their attention, getting them on board, but at the same time, allowing them some, some, some moments to 
recollect all those words that they know that they've picked up here and there along the way about the topic that you want to, to mention, okay? So we, we know that children start um, learning English in primeiro ciclo, in the third grade, but we also know that they don't come to us in the same level, right? So some children have already had English before, some of them for a number of years. Others, this is absolutely new to them. So we can use this, this moment as a sort of opportunity for children to help each other, collaborate, interact, and therefore you bring the whole class together to the topic without just jumping right into the book or jumping right into the exercises that you need to, to, to carry out, okay? So that's one activity, using pre-activities to stimulate interest, curiosity, uh, vocabulary that they already know. So, and one of them, a very simple one, is by either printing a picture, cutting the picture, maybe put it up on the wall if you don't want to, take that many photocopies and cut out that much, much paper, or you can use an online uh, website like the I Am Puzzle, okay? All right, then moving on to Second type of activities, these two are also related to vocabulary and they can be used like the first one to sparkle interest, to get students curious, or they can be used as lexical expansion, so expanding vocabulary, or even as reviewing and consolidating all the concepts, okay? So, personally, I'm a fan. I've been doing this for a number of years. I've been playing this sort of game for a number of years. The hidden objects, okay? So you can, if you've been in other sessions with me and if you've heard me speaking about hidden objects game, please, please, I do apologize, but I still believe that they're absolutely fantastic. They sparkle, they get students, they help you focus your attention. They memory, vocabulary practice. There are so many different things that go, go on in your brain when you're working on a hidden objects game that it's really, really beneficial, right? Even in this, this, uh, this ability of remem remembering where things were the, the, the previous time in terms of prepositions, you know, there's a whole thing that you can do with them. So this one is an app, again, I don't expect children in primary school to be to be using mobile phones in class, no. But I do know that some schools do have interactive whiteboards. So you can have one of these installed in the interactive whiteboard and work with the students from there. Or, or which was my initial intention with this, when we want to set up homework or extra practice exercises, some of our schools or most of our schools have Moodle and we can create a classroom. Why not make, you know, the after lesson a little bit more interactive? You know, seeing that kids do enjoy spending time online, they do enjoy um, playing games on tablets, on mobile phones, even if they don't use them at school. Why not give them the link and the possibility for them to practice a little bit more at home? Following the same line of thought, you've got this website, which is Highlights Kids. Um, here's the link, but there's also a link at the end of the presentation for you to, to check out. Well, this one has a number of games, many different games. It's, uh, cre it was created for ESL learning. Right. There's a lot of CLIL activities around it as well. So very good if you if you want to be able to bring some of that other topics um, into your English classroom and it works the same way. So you have a picture. The students are supposed to find these items on the picture. Um, you've got the word. I've got I've got you under my skin. Something happened here, never mind. So I was trying to, what am I doing? Okay. You know, technology is not always your best friend, but I'm going to get there. Okay. 
I got there. I was trying to clean this and I didn't manage to clean it. Well, we get the point. So what I was showing you is that under each picture, we've got the name, the word, okay? And so it helps associate visually with the word that is, um, that is being, that is being um, looked for, okay? All right, so moving on. And for some reason now, it will not move on. Okay, let's see if I can. Give me a second because this is actually live. So sometimes we don't get to work as we wish. All right, I'm gonna ask my friends. Can somebody just shout out to me how I change this? So here we go, here we go, all right, so now I need to find it, which is in source, no, apps, main, all right, it's not source, where are the, And here we go. All right. And now we want to present. It's the same. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. So basically what I was just doing, nothing happened. Everything was perfect. Okay. So what happened was me just making sure that you were paying attention. Okay, so we're back, <laughs> all right? If this has never happened to you, you're the lucky one because it has happened to me before. Okay, so like I had, like I showed you, so we've got these activities that are more for vocabulary extension. These two are, of course, using a little bit more of technology. But this doesn't mean that we can't have, for example, some worksheets or like a visual dictionary. Let me explain what this is. So my kids are very young to be using an English Portuguese dictionary or a Portuguese English dictionary or even a visual dictionary. So what I've created was these posters that I've been collecting over the years. And on these posters, I've got many different things. So, for example, this one is about Thanksgiving. This is about feelings. This is animals. We've got all sorts. Of, we even have one on COVID recently. Got this one on colors. And okay, so you get the you get the point. Where do I get these from? I get them from ISL Collective which is a free website for teachers. So you can register. And once you register, you can download, you can contribute your own, you can thank teachers for what they're doing. So all of that. And like I said, I've collected these over the years. I've got them in these pockets because it's easier for me to sanitize them nowadays with, uh, with COVID. Laminating them is not always, in my opinion, the best, um, the best choice, mainly because it, it might be expensive. It's not as convenient unless you have a laminating machine at home. Uh, how do I use this? So throughout the lesson, children might be doing a number of things. They might be working on different activities. And these are always on my desk. And children know that they can come. They can look for the page that they want. It's been, you know, usually with things that we've already covered. So it works a little bit like a revision. And they can take one of the, these to their desk, use it, check, whatever they want. It's also a way of making students a little bit more autonomous and it's not that hard to carry around, right? So you just 
Well, I've got them with a with a big paper clip, but you can have them on a folder if you're more organized than I am. Okay. So these are activities for expanding, consolidating, reviewing vocabulary. These two you can use on a computer, you can use on a tablet, you can use on an interactive whiteboard, you can set them as homework in a Moodle environment, for example, or Edmodo environment to make, to expand the classroom outside the lesson itself. And you can have the posters because we know that unfortunately we keep on moving around and we don't have one class only. So we can't have a wall display with just our posters. But this is a way that I found to, to get my posters to be with me at all times and that students can also interact with them and they can use them when they want to. And this way also, you know, stimulating a little bit of this student autonomy that we, uh, that we want students to, to have, right? It's one of our, our objectives, one of our goals. Okay. Now, we usually work with course books. And right now I'm working with uh, STARS. I, I've been working with STARS 3, actually not STARS 4. But anyway, I'm working with STARS. And you remember my monster? Okay, so my monster um, was because I wanted to cover the body. And on STARS, you've got a, a unit, can't remember the unit, but you've got this exercise. So basically it's a very simple matching exercise. You've got the three monsters, you've got the description of the monsters, and what you need to do is match. You can have this, the same exercise, you can have it on the book and just use it straight out of the book. No adapting needed, nothing to change. But you can, if you want to, have it a twist here. So one of the things that you can do is Again, you can take a photocopy, very simple, you can take a photocopy, just like two or three, basically. Divide the class in groups, right? Give them the pictures, give them the cards, and have them physically move the cards around until they've come to the correct description, okay? Yes, this takes a little bit more time because it requires you to photocopy, cut out, have the students organized in, in, uh, in groups. But when you think about it, it's also going to be a lot more engaging. And if you remember engaging and motivation and challenging and achievable and memorable and monitorable, that's all the sort of exercise, the activities that we want to have in a classroom, okay? Now, this exercise, the same exercise has a variant in Schola Virtual. So in, the, in Schola Virtual, what you're going to have, and again, if you have access to um, internet in your classroom, if you have an interactive whiteboard, even the better, but you can perfectly have it if you don't, okay? So the same exercise, but you can see the descriptions are not here. The descriptions have been uh, moved to this side and basically what the student needs to do is to drag and drop. Again, this activity can be done at home. It can be done at, uh, at sorry, in, in class, it can be done at home. Extension, consolidation, extra practice, whatever it is that you decide, it helps you, you know, tailor learning a little bit more to your students and to your students' needs. And that's one of the things. All right. Something else that you can do, and this is a, a follow-up, and it's like the next level, okay? If we're playing a game, it's the next level. And for that, I'm going to need your help now, okay? So this is what's going to happen. I am going to dictate a text to you. And my text is a description of a monster. And I'm going to follow exactly the same structure that we have in these three descriptions, okay? And what you're going to do is, instead of writing the words, you're going to draw the monster according to my dictation, okay?
So, for example, let's check instruction checking, okay? So I'm going to get my, I'm going to look at the comments, and I'm going to ask you a question, and you're going to answer me, okay? So, if I say, this monster has 10 legs, how many legs are you going to draw? Write in the chat box, come on. And if I'm going to say that you're going to have, the monster is go, it has got one eye, how many eyes are you going to draw? And this is the exercise and this is the activity we're going to need um, Padlet for, okay? So if you still haven't had time, go ahead, take the moment now. Thank you. Okay, so I can see that you're getting the point. Okay, so like I said, if you haven't downloaded um, Padlet yet to your phone, please do it now because for the next activity, we are going to use tablet, okay? Padlet, sorry. One nose, very one eye, 10 legs. Very good. Wow. You're amazing students. Did you know that? Obviously, because you're amazing teachers. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. You ready? So you're going to need pen or pencil and paper. Okay. Pen, pencil or paper and paper. No, not or paper you need. You need, either need a pencil or a pen, but you need paper. And you're getting ready to draw. Okay, you ready? Yes? So remember, this is a drawing dictation. I'm going to dictate and you draw what you hear. All right? Here we go. Ready or not, here I come. Okay, yeah. This monster has got a small mouth and one big tooth. My monster has four legs, one arm, and two ears. It has got one big eye. It hasn't got ears, but it has got, sorry, give you a clue there, two noses. I'm going to repeat my dictation, okay? This time I'm going to speak a little bit faster. This monster has got a small mouth and one big foot. It has four legs, one arm, and four fingers. It has got one big eye. It hasn't got ears, but it has got two noses. Okay, you draw it. Are you proud of your drawing? You should. You should, because drawing monsters at this time of the day, after you've been teaching the whole day and you've got probably kids running around at home, you're amazing, trust me. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm saying. I've got three little monsters at home myself. Okay, all right. So, what are you going to do now? You've got your monster. And now this is where I'm going to monitor you. Yes, you didn't think you'd get away with it, right? No. So what's going to happen is this. You're going to need Padlet, okay? When you open Padlet, it's going to ask if you, if you don't have an account yet. It's going to ask you if you want an account. You don't need an account. What you do need is to find the button there that's going to ask you to the, allow you to read the QR code, okay? Find the button that allows you to read the QR code. When you find that button, you can scan this code here. So just point your phone at the screen or just go to this link, okay? To find 
our Padlet. All right. While you're doing that, I want to add it to the main screen. And here we go. Okay, so once you've added, once you've, you've reached this page, there's going to be this pink button here with a plus sign, all right? So you're going to press the button, you're going to take a photo of your monster and you're going to publish because I want to see your photos, your pictures, your drawings of your monster, okay? Go ahead, let me just Taking a little bit to get here. So remember, once you get to Padlet, once you get to Padlet, press the button. Okay. <laughs> well, I've got a, well, this is not exactly a monster, but that's not bad. Can I have a few monsters here? Or are you not? Oh, what a beautiful monster there. Hello. Love it. Four legs, one hand, four fingers, two noses, no ears, one big eye. Amazing. I'd love to see more drawings, please. Thanks, Vanya. And Claudia, that's amazing. You guys are artists. You really are artists. You know that? Okay, more. Please, come on, share. So we've got three. I am sure we've got more drawings coming there. Come on. Anonymous, I really like your foot. Not sure. We're going to have space for more. Nobody else is going to share? Mm, let me see. QR code. Okay, so you are asking for the QR code again. Wait a second, let me go back. There you go. There's the QR code. Either, yes, you can use the app on your computer, just that it's going to be harder for you to, um, to take a snapshot of your drawing, unless you, you've been drawing on, um, on paint, for example, on your, on, your, on your computer, okay? All right. Carmen, you can't do it. Why not? Tell me what's wrong. Let's see how it is. And we've got another one there. Very good. I'm very bad at drawing. No, you are not, Carla. You're amazing, you know. Picasso would have been proud of you. Trust me, I am. Okay. Now, obviously, you can do this. And, and here, the, the point of us having this here is for, for there to be interaction between you over there and me over here, because even though we love webinars, uh, the reality is that we're not interacting directly. And this is what one way I find um, that it's interesting if you're teaching and you don't have your students with you, or if you just want to, to use technology. Obviously, in order for this to, to happen, you don't have to have Padlet. You don't have 
to be using technology. You can simply pick up the drawings from the children and put them up on the wall. I'm pretty sure the teacher, their, their main teacher, is going to find a spot for you to, to leave your, your drawings there, right? And we've got one more coming from Anna. Thank you so much. Oh, and they're starting to... Okay, so just a hand, the monster ran away. Okay, now I'm feeling happy now. It's coming, it's coming in. All right, so we've got lovely monsters. Lovely monsters. You people really are creative. And this sort of activity, the drawing dictation, is something that you can do with anything. It doesn't require any preparation or special preparation, really. You can do it, for example, if you're working with um, school objects. You can just tell your students, all right, we're going to draw the content of my uh, pencil case, right? And you start looking at your pencil case and... Um, numbering the, 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 the different or stating the different objects you have there. You can do it with family, you can do it with food, you can do it with likes and dislikes, parts of the house, uh, animals, you know, the sky is the limit. You can do it with anything. With uh, the, the, the dictations are really just a way to get students to focus and for you also to realize if they understand what is being said, right? Because if I start looking at the pictures and I see that my students, the, the, the drawings, and I see that, my, that some students have five legs instead of four, or they have no legs whatsoever, but they do have four arms, maybe they're not clear on the topic here. So maybe I do need a bit of, of uh, reviewing. I also advise you to choose silly things. Why? Some children are extremely good at drawing. Some children are not. I was hopeless, okay? I'm, I'm horrible. So if, where is she? Uh, somebody's saying here that Carla, Carla Cunha says that she's not good at drawing. Well, the way you feel, it's the way that some of your students might feel as well. So if we choose something that is silly and it doesn't require that much artistic skill, then we make it an, an, an activity that is suitable for everyone. And everybody feels included and everybody feels that they can do it in some way because nobody's going to be um, monitoring how beautiful it is, right? Um, if you do feel that some of your students might be a bit more aware of their own limitations when it comes to, to drawing, well, you can just simply collect it, right? Take pictures to a, a poster or college without identifying who it was. Just identify the class. And then it's going to be a group, a class project without pinpointing who did what and who's the best um, artist in the class, okay? A little bit of, of interaction here. Okay, so I've got a few brave exercise uh, drawings here. I'm sure many more will come, but there's a, a slight delay here, but keep them, keep them going and then I swear that I'll take a screenshot uh, to show you so that you could see all the beautiful monsters that popped up. Okay, so going back to my PowerPoint, to the next activity. Let me just check how we are doing for time. And this is vocabulary notebooks. Now, I know um, some people already use vocabulary notebooks. I'm not going to pretend that this is something absolutely new because it's not. They've been around for, for a long time. But I do feel that over the years, we've stopped using them. Um, and, and what I want to do, what I like doing is I want to bring them back to the classroom. Even with older students, for the record, I use vocabulary notebooks with all levels, even high school students, obviously in a different format with different purposes, but I do use vocabulary notebooks throughout my, uh, uh, throughout you know, range of levels and, and ages. So why use vocabulary notebooks? 
vocabulary notebooks are going to promote some, some level of independence. They're going to promote uh, autonomy, independence, personalized learning, uh, learning to learn skills. I think this is so important because what I feel is that we, we sometimes, sometimes children don't know how to study. They don't know how to learn, right? They know that for the test, they need to study 10 pages or 15 pages or from page five to page 25. But what does that mean? What does learning or studying mean, right? How do they do it? Reading? By using flashcards? How are we going to help them with that? Okay, so vocabulary notebooks, um, in a way, are going to help the student mentally organize themselves and to understand and at the same time consolidate what is being put there. Okay, so usually what I, you can use any sort of, of notebook for, for vocabulary notebooks. I usually use an A5 format because with children I think it's easier for them to manipulate, right? Some, uh, I've seen some colleagues use um, those spiral notebooks. I use a, a, a regular Svinta, okay? And let me show you the one I have here. So this one is from Artur, my lovely Artur, my lovely eight-year-old Artur, but this one is mine, okay? So I also have a vocabulary notebook that is going to help me uh, so to know what it is that I'm going to do for the different pages of my students. That is, in order for me to create an, a class, a, a notebook for my students, I have to have one for myself because I want to know what, exactly what topics I want to cover, which topics I want to, to, to include. Another advantage that I didn't put here, but another advantage is that this goes with the student. So when they move on from third grade to fourth grade, even when they go on to fifth grade or sixth grade, because yes, they still love this, it continues to be useful for them. It continues to be relevant. And I've also come to realize that students are very, very uh, careful with their vocabulary notebooks because they're proud. It's their work. They're really proud and they, they put the effort in making them nice and neat. Now, vocabulary notebooks can be as sophisticated or simple as you want them to be. You can have, um, you will find apps online that create interactive uh, notebooks vocabulary notebooks. This one is my sort of, or my idea of a vocabulary, interactive vocabulary notebook. So on the first page, you don't see anything here, but usually I will just ask students, uh, what's your favorite cartoon character? And I will ask them to print it, paint it, and glue it here. Make it personal. Start right away by making the notebook something that is going to be appealing. Then I've got the table of contents, and this is really important because they need to sense right from the beginning that this is going to be something organized, nice, neat, clean, okay? Even because I do include assessment grid, so a notebook grading rubric in my, in my uh, notebook. So this one is divided into four. Um, basically a table of contents is complete. All uh, notebook pages are included. All notebook pages are complete. Notebook pages are neat and organized. Information is accurate and that would get them a four. And then it moves down until one. But students will always get um, a grade. This also encourages them to keep it nice, neat, and organized, even though, to be honest, the majority of my students do it without needing the incentive of, of grades. Okay, so I start out with classroom rules, and I've got these little um, templates that I find out online. Some of them I found online, some of them I've been using for some years. I don't even remember where I got them from. So I've got this uh, ticket to success. It basically, it's a cutout and you see it says, you can do it, right? And then I've got my flower with the norms. 
then classroom language. So you can make it a picture dictionary. So you can just photocopy, print, ask or print and ask the students to cut, glue and write. Or you can have them writing and drawing some of it, which is also interesting because then it gives you a variety of, of input that, uh, that you can have. So on this one here, again, this is classroom language. What I have this this cutout, and here I've got the sentences in Portuguese. Uh, como se diz, blah, 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 in English. And then when they open the little flap, it has what, da, 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 in English. And every time or when they're starting, right, that they need a little bit more prompting on how to speak in English and constant reminders, speak in English, speak in English, you can always tell them, go to your notebook, vocabulary, to your vocabulary notebook, check. How do you say this? How do you say that? After a while, it gets to them. This one, for example, is for the alphabet. Instead of just traditionally uh, having the alphabet, I just went ahead and divided it with vowels and consonants. Okay. And I'm not going to bore you with every page, but I do want to go over a few of them. See here again, it was drawing and writing, not any cutouts anything like that, um, the numbers. This one is interesting because I've got school objects here and it's a, a sort of an active because there's a little envelope here and envelope it, there's a template for it as well. And I've got my objects in here. So for example, I've got my pencil, right? I've got my pencil here and I can just put it here. Now, if the students are, and you'll see further ahead, that we can turn this into a game, right? If students are, well, you can say, for example, I've got pencil, what have you got? Or you can just like go, go fish, play go fish with the different, with the different activities, with the different students, okay? That's one of them. Uh, the colors, again, the family, I've got on this side, I've got uh, names referring to boys, like the dad, the stepdad, and the grandpa. And then on when you open the flat, you got the, the name in Portuguese, just a gentle reminder of what these words are. Seasons, for example, this one, th this has nothing, it's nothing spectacular about it. It's just a different way of placing information so that it becomes a little bit more appealing, you know. It uh, gets their curiosity, so you just open the flaps here and it's the, the months. And basically that's it. I use post-its sometimes. Um, another one, template from the internet. Prepositions, this one, they had to they would have to, they will have to glue the ball in the right position and then they can check behind. A little bit of quill here with maths and also the numbers. Again, flaps. So in this case, it was for nationalities and uh, countries. So here you've got the country, Portugal, you've got the nationality, Portuguese. And if you open the flap, you've got the, the flag. Now, obviously, and especially if we have many classes, it's hard for us to take uh, color photocopies, right? So I don't, I usually take black and white photocopies and then I will just ask students to paint. Or I will leave it as it is and then have a little bit of interaction here where I ask students to add three flags that they find and this they could draw, they can find in magazines, they could find, they could go online, print them, cut them and place them, fine. Same thing here for pets. So in this case, it's not just pets. I'm also looking at plurals. I've got cat cats, different color to draw their attention. I also have inside the envelope, I've got the animals. So for example, here I've got mouse, right? One mouse. And then on the back, not sure if you can see that, but I have both the singular and the plural. Okay. Oh, and it's there. It's associated to the card so the children can see it, feel it, and remember. And again, this can be used like a memory game. If you have more people, you can have, um, if you're playing with other students, 
or if you're playing tic-tac-toe, for example, and so on. And, well, you get the point. So sometimes you use templates that you get somewhere, sometimes you just make it into a picture dictionary, sometimes you just draw, sometimes you just use post-its and so on. So, but all of this is extremely useful. Now I've got, um, I've got this folder that's been with me for years where I have the templates for these things that I was just showing you, some of them, right? And that I just print, photocopy and cut. Um, I already have a few of them ready to go when I have some bit of time or for fast finishers, sometimes I ask them, well, would you mind helping me a bit here? And they just start cutting because sometimes you have students that you know are going to take longer and it's a little bit of a, of a help uh, for them if you already give them the, the cutout. If you don't want to do this in class, you can always set it as a homework activity and you can have the vocabulary notebook be a project that students can carry out throughout the, the term or throughout the year at home, alone, or with their parents, okay? Including the family here a little bit in your activities. Like I said, you can find a lot of these. There are a lot of apps that you can use, but paper for children, uh, especially for this, I think is the best option. Then I'm almost at the end here, okay? So just a quick note about, about games. So we have lots and lots of different games online, but we can use, uh, also use games in class. Now at my school, we've got this wall that we've turned into an I Spy. Uh, game, which is again another hidden objects game. And basically we have the, the wall. We, uh, initially we wanted to use uh, pictures, but then we thought, okay, it might be more interesting if we find real objects. And we started asking students if they could bring objects from home, from their everyday life. And this is how we built it. We, we, some of it, it was us, the teachers, who bought and brought to class. Others, we just asked the students to bring in. And basically, we've been creating, and this is an ongoing project, so it's never, never over, okay? So we add a little bit, and then um, we just ask students. We get teams, right? Two students in front of the of the wall display and they go and the teacher goes or one of the other students goes I spy with my little eye and then they mention one of the objects obviously the objects that we included were thought about um, bearing in mind the syllabus that we needed to to complete for that year and the students should another again consolidating vocabulary now memory games Fantastic. Memory games are always, always fantastic. And tic-tac-toe that you can play, for example, with the little cards that you saw. And what we have is this. You can show a card. You can say uh, the picture. They see the picture. My example here. Okay. So, for example, this one is fish. And you can have two students play and one says the plural, this is fish, one fish, what's the plural? If the other one, if the, the other student says fish, well done. They get to choose the spot where they want to put their, their mark. If the student doesn't get it right, they lose their turn. Okay, so it's a little bit of an incentive is learning without really realizing that they're learning, um, but that works very well. So here are some resources online for you to explore. Okay, so you have these ESL Games Plus is a world of memory games. Um, board games in digital form. So if you've got an interactive whiteboard uh, at school, this one is fantastic. Also great if you want to set it for extra practice for home, even with those kids that are a bit more, uh, I wouldn't say challenging, but that they are not very on board with learning. Okay, so it could be a good option. 
then highlight kids, lots of games as well, Schola Virtual, obviously, ESL Collective, like I said, it's where I get most of my posters, a lot of worksheet available, ready-made, free, you just uh, go in, register, log in, and that's it. I Spy Games, so if you don't have a wall display, you can always play it in your class using the projector or the board, and to create the puzzles that are going to help you um, consolidate vocabulary or introduce new topics. You've got the I'm a puzzle that allows you to upload a picture, any picture that you want or choose from pictures that they have there. And that's it for me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, I'm just going to check my internet here, see if we have any questions, any comments. So my phone, my computer decided not to work. Sorry, teacher, I'm using my phone. Okay. Okie dokie. So where is my, Jesus, where's my YouTube? There you go. Oh, it's working again. Okay. Okay. All right, so I can, don't have any questions for the time being. We do have my, sorry, my computer is a bit slow, so I'm getting there. Just give me a second. Computers, you know, technology. Don't you just wish they would move as fast as you want to? They don't. That one doesn't want to work. It's a good thing I don't get. There's no point in getting technology. Ooh, Don't you just it's wish not they would supposed move as fast to. as you want to? Right. It's a good thing I don't get angry at technology. All right. So a lot of thank yous. Thank you so much for paying attention to me and for bearing um bearing with me through all the problems that I had today with, with tech. I always say today is going to be the day I'm not going to have an issue with tech. It never is. It never is. Okay. All right. So that's my email over there in case you want to get in touch. If you have any questions regarding what happened today, um, I believe my colleagues are going to send you the presentation to those of you who enrolled. They're going to send you the presentation. Um, thanks for sharing your monsters on Padlet uh, for using a little bit of, of, um, of, uh, of, our, of our technology as well. And... I think that's pretty much it. So if you need anything from me, if you have any questions regarding any of those, just please remember, just get in touch. I'll be more than happy to, to help everyone, okay? So thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.